my fellow Freedom Low Sovereign Thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to LO3 Podcast. My name is Craig Transmitting from beautiful Swampy Mango, South Florida. And today's date is Saturday, March 27th, 2021. And I was like networking with some of my colleagues from the Floridians First.us and um, seeing what they want to talk about. And um, there are good people out there. I knew uh, the, the president, Gabriel Cabrera, over. Man, about 12 years now. So, um, it was very nice to see him again, and it's always in our blood. Yeah, I like the movement and so forth. And um, a lot of it's like Trump related, however, but the whole thing is they want to make things better in their own party. They, they be, it's like they're being swindled, and I have to commend them for that, you know, regardless of your political beliefs. Because if it's not working for the benefit of the, the people, you got to get proactive and get things going. So, um, well, so I always give them props for that. For the nice little meeting they had. Chat with some different folks from different walks of life. So it's always good to have discussion with people. And it um, doesn't matter where I go. I even started talking to Chief Party in Fort Lauderdale many years ago. Along with Occupy as well. Always network and share information. So I always, always, myself always support a common interest. But um, let me talk a couple articles. But before I do that, I just got word right now today: um, reopen South Florida and Free Florida present Million Masters March. You're invited. Bring Master Burn and Mask Burning. We're over this. It will be Saturday, April 10th, 2021, 3 p.m. in the corner of A1 and Los Olas on Fort Lauderdale Beach. It may be at the park over there. The new park they have there would be pretty cool. But um, looks like the, it's very good. The city of Fort Lauderdale police are really uh, supporting it, and um, we have a good relationship with these people. So that's what counts. Always be neighbor. That's always been my uh, motto, right? One of my mottos. One of my uh, beliefs. So, um, so it'd be pretty cool. And um, if, if you know, if you if you want to check out a cool cool site, they have it's called FreeFlorida.me.me, and I'm on there too. We share, like I said, they um, get reports that um, stories that the mainstream media don't want you to know, and it's more on a Florida level, state state level, so accounting and all that. This is why I always tell people: if you're completely active, think local, think and act locally. Don't wait for Washington to see to solve your problems. Start in, lo- start in your own uh, neighborhood. So, and um, I was very p- encouraged to see that, and. Um, that's going to be happening for the positive thing. So it's going to be a big a movement. Like everything else, something happens overnight. There's no such thing as a magic lamp there. You got to go out there, keep these people on your toes. Remember, you're the boss, not them. They can say whatever the hell they want. So um, we can't be lackadaisical, but don't beat your head into a wall because I know we have all, everyone has a different um, lifestyle. So we have different avenues on how to do things. But um, yeah, so I always encourage people to go out there. Get those N95 masters, burn them to the ground when you go over there. Million masters march. So all you guys will be invited. Attitudes are left, are off limits. Negative attitudes are off limits. So don't harass anyone. If you're going to be, if you're going to criticize, that's one thing. No threats, nothing egregious. That's how I look at it. So. All right, so um, I'm going to be, uh, right now, just let you folks know, I'm at Downtown or Saloon, located at 10 South New River Drive, along New River, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is uh, near the Cal Courthouse and the jail, southeast section of the Andrews Avenue Bridge. So, nice, nice little crowd here, and always, you know, one of my uh, cool spots, I, they let me do my shows, and I always uh, thank them for that. And come on down, support local, the local local restaurants and so forth, and tell them Craig sent you. Look, you look the third. They know who I am. <laughs> I'm going to do a couple topic campaigning. Um, that's for all Florida related here. So um, I know I've been doing a lot of stuff in my state. Is this so much information out there? Is this sometimes I gotta like pick, you know? And um, you never know. I may do some international related stuff anytime soon. I haven't done it in a while. And I do apologize for all my listeners out in India and all that, too. I know they um, like to hear what my intake is in other air parts of the world. So um, hopefully I can just um, get that, make that happen. But thank you for all, all you folks out there supporting. 
hit that like button on Spreaker or wherever you get the show. Hit that like button, and um, I will tell you how to donate, where to donate, and all that. That'd be cool too. So um, let's, let's check it out here. It'll be the first thing I'm going to read from a good colleague, a good colleague named um, a good person named Isabel Edmonds, NewsBuzz.com, and it's F U A M I. And it's mainly uh, Florida's uh, and the mask insanity. So um, f a f u a m i dot org came out today, and it says here: Sanctuary states for a constitution is now or never. What do I have to say here? As our founding fathers made uh, crystal clear, support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It's incumbent upon every American, not only those who must take an oath of office or natural or, or naturalized citizens who take an oath of citizenship. What happens when the domestic enemies of our Constitution take control of our federal government, begin attacking and eliminate our constitutional rights centrally, and then begin to overtly expand this erosion throughout the nation? That's a question. And to the Tenth Amendment, powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution or prohibited to the states are reserved to the states respectfully or to the people. The crucial safeguard has been disregarded and discarded by a few states and about to be eliminated to others. Uh, the final and mission accomplished benchmark for the enemies of our Constitution is when every state shares the status. Unfortunately, we are nearing this benchmark speedily. Our enemy synthetic terrorism pretext took away some of our most valuable rights and freedoms. Their pandemic pretext has been taken away other crucial rights, including our basic human rights. They are already designed and forecast pretext mass shooting epidemic is being plugged in right now. And other pretexts, such as intimate global warming catastrophe, are pre-planned and scripted, ready to go per their schedule. With all these realities on the ground, here are my questions. Are we going to sit back and wait for the inviolable end, the end of what makes the USA, USA, our Constitution? Have we seized, believed in the constitutionalism, defined the core of Americanism? What is our inter, inter, interpretation of defending the Constitution of the United States, of, a, of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic? While our majority has been consistent in wearing their apathy without any shame and justifying inaction as being safe, there are millions of us alarmed and restless Americans who wear our nationalism the right way by being avid and uncompromising constitutionalists. Sally, some of this needed re- uh, restlessness and resistance is being co-opted and rechanneled into futile action. Hope and energy poured in some coming elections as if no lesson learned or registered after the last round. Resources and faith placed on courts as in any good has come out of the kangaroo courts in the past two decades. Be it on constitutional police state practices such as warrantless surveillance or forced muzzling and caging. All tried many times, all failed every time. Then why not try a different and more feasible tack. Our Tenth Amendment is almost never utilized. It's still there. Isn't it time to put to use in practice as it was and is intended? Guarding our constitutional rights falls upon us, but also on our state governments and together can be formed to sanctuaries for our Constitution to uphold and defend it. Join me then. Let's unite and organize. Let's make our state sanctuaries for the Constitution. It is our most feasible and doable do- um, action plan. It is constitutional, and for our Constitution, together we can and unite. United, we certainly will win. And she's absolutely correct. And I always recommend folks, too, we start look, look at your state constitutions as well. And here's one thing, a great thing about these uh, scenarios. They don't want us to, they, they, they saw these individuals in this administration, the privileged one, the privileged administration, I call it, has um, 
probably don't re, don't recall any commandeering doctrine. Now I have talked about this on my last show, on my show a while back by the Tenth Amendment Center. Well, I'm not going to read the whole thing here. Will be the you know any commandeering doctrine introduction, which is by Mike Meharry, and um, I've read this before. And when you look at Federalist Papers 46, which was written by James Madison on federal overreach. And this, they made this great, quote, the great quote here. Should an unwarrantable measure of the federal government be unpopular in particular states, which would seldom fail to be the case, or even a warrantable measure be so, which may sometimes be the case, the means of opposition to it are powerful and at hand. The disquietude of the people, their repugnance, and perhaps refusal to cooperate with officers of the union, the frowns of the executive magistracy of the state, the embarrassment created by legislative devices, which would often be added on such occasions, would oppose in any state very serious imp- imp- impediments and where the sentiments of several adjoining states have to be in the Union, in Union, would present obstructions which the federal government will be hardly, would hardly be willing to encounter. That's an example about the anti-commandeering doctrine. So it tells you cases on there, and one of them, of course, was the Prince versus, uh, Prince Mac, Sheriff Prince Mac versus the United States on the Brady Law. So it's, a, it's very good to learn learn these things. There's multiple cases on any commandeering doctrine. And hey, even if even if your local governments want to do these orders, even on the state level, you got the power to nullify jury jury nullification. All right, there's no victim. How is that a crime? Don't be afraid of using not guilty. Start calling out these prostituting attorneys. Ask them questions. If you're on jury duty, it's time to embarrass these people legally one way or the other but they all assume they we're just a bunch of peasants and numbers which I never ever accept all these years of my existence can be countered with jury nullification use that also and they're like great examples. The Fugitive Slave Act case. I think four were convicted over 200 cases during the United States in the, in the 19th century. That helped end slavery. Those before the unnecessary, I call it the unnecessary war. The illegal war. But it was working. Okay? It's always good to know these things. Of course, the Risky Rebellion. And even... Um, Look what happened with the Mauer 7 case. They nullified it too. Said not guilty. Because they don't want to give the they don't want to give the accused a fair trial. So the jury heard the, the garbage rhetoric saying, oh yeah, we can but these guys are FBI informants, they, they can't testify. Well, you know what? The jury gave them a the jury said, well the hell with you, not guilty. Alright, so yeah, all that stuff works. Nullification is a beautiful remedy, my friends. Jefferson said that proudly. Now you too. Because the whole thing is, they can't, they can make all these stupid laws, frivolous laws, which are invalid in contracts. We could just tell them where to go. Legitimately. So, always encourage people to know about your natural rights, study your history, learn about your U.S. and state constitutions, and exercise it thoroughly. What I always say before, the more you know about your rights, the more you exercise it, the less you fear. Have that moral compass enlightened. You know, they're trying to gaslight everything, but we got the power to say, no way, Jose, right? But always learn on your rights, even as a juror, because like I say, you're the most powerful person in that courtroom. They got more authority over the judge on these cases, whether it's criminal or civil. Just to let you folks know, don't be afraid of these individuals. So, um, and and uh, so I said, Edmonds had everything right. Don't be afraid. Don't be. Don't be. A, don't be a. Um, don't be the one wearing shackles and chains. They all want us to live in this 
technocratic plantation. Uh, okay, well that's enough of that. I'll be ranting on that on that subject. I'll do one more here. Came from the Epoch Times. Governor DeSantis, Florida Governor DeSantis, asked CDC to reverse baseless nail sale order for cruises. This is what Samuel Samuel Allergy said. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis criticized the Center for Disease Control and Prevention for announcing on Wednesday that no sale order on cruise ships will remain in place until November 1st. On Friday, the governor sat down with Florida officials in a roundtable to discuss the importance of the industry calling the order baseless. During the meeting, DeSantis asked the CDC to reserve their no sale order that has been in place since March 14, 2020. If there is one thing we've learned over the past year is that lockdowns don't work and Floridians deserve the right to earn a living, DeSantis said. Said DeSantis, the cruise industry is essential to our state economy and keeping it shut down until November will be devastating to the men and women who rely on the cruise lines to provide for themselves their families. I urge the CDC to immediately rescind this baseless no sale order to allow Floridians in this industry to get back to work. The governor also recommended that Florida seaports receive $258.2 million from federal funds for promoting economic development and recovery for the lucrative industry. Due to the cruise industry shutdown, losses in Florida totaled $3.2 billion in economic activity, including $2.3 billion in lost wages and 49,500 jobs, according to the statement from the governor. Vaccine requirement. Earlier this month, Virgin Voyages, the cruise line, founded by billionaire business ma- uh, magnate, magnate Richard Bronson, which I believe he was, um, he was, he was at a um, Bilderberg meeting one time, right? Yeah, I remember reading about that. Announced that they will require all crew and passengers to get a CCP virus vaccine. Well, you know what? Screw you, buddy. I'm not going on your cruise line. I won't even work for you. The CEO of Virgin Voyages, Tom McAlpin, said in a statement emailed to the Epoch Times that the company's goal is to provide the safest travel experience, which means vaccination for both crew and passengers. All hail to technocracy, right? New World Order 101. We know that the future is vaccinations and testing, McAlpin said, and that's why Virgin Voyages is committed to fully vaccinate cruises, he added. The Virgin Voyages... Um, chief also said to the company is really encouraged by the Biden administration's latest vaccine rollout plans in the time of the main, mainframe. Yep, so you support involuntary servitude. You should have all your workers wear shackles and chains goes, yes, master, may I have another? Another cur- uh, company, the Royal Caribbean International, along with the subsidiary Celebrity Cruises, announced also last week that passengers who travel abroad, their cruises will have to be vaccinated for the CCP vaccine. Royal Caribbean will provide cruises to the Bahamas and Mexico in June, the company said. Travelers look ahead to their summer vacations, can book their round-trip cruises as soon as Wednesday, March 24th, and set sail starting June 12th. New itineraries departing through August, which will sail with vaccinated crew, will be available to adult guests who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, the cruise operator said in a statement. Passengers who are under the age of 18 have 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 to uh, test negative for the CCP virus. The release added. Um, Tom Ozimek and Jack Phillips contribute to the report. Yeah, the science is right. Keep it open. But now you got these Orwellian companies that will um, spread their butt cheeks to the one world order, to technocracy, to have all their employees take the vaccine, including their pastors. Let me tell you something. You need me more. I need you, buddy. Bunch of clowns out there. And I don't blame Ron DeSantis for calling it out. And your and your bogus COVID nineteen passport, which you probably for promote, promote yourself. You probably all climax to the market of the beach bars. I'm concerned. It is deplorable, unacceptable, and tyrannical. As far as I'm concerned, these people here they're just treat they're just trees as parasites. As far as I'm how I how I see it. And um, I'm just totally dumbfounded with these clowns. Do things half-ass backwards, you know? Half-ass backwards. It should, all, it should all do the serious salute and sing God bless the new order. Imperialism is the only way. That's how I look at it, folks. You tell me what you have to say. 
you know what to do. And that will be it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, and since something interesting, want to check out whatever you do, please send your cards to the form. Furthermore, I'll leave the footnotes of these articles on my speaker page. And if you want to contact me, you can email me at lookyluckyluck03 at protemail.com. If you want to donate, you can hit me at um, paypal.me or cash.app forward slash lookyluck number three. If you want to send your contributions to to um, news buds or Florida, you know, F A F U A M I dot org and the Epoch Times, that would be greatly appreciated. Remember, we're all in this together. We're not here for the make become millionaires, all right? Just spreading the word of truth. So, once again, thank you for your time. But always remember that demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.